there, everyone. Welcome back to the BBTV channel, and we're going to be talking about Dead by Daylight, and we're going to be making a switch from the survivors back to the killers, and our first killer I want to talk about is none other than the spirit. The spirit's tale is one of just a whole bunch of just horror. It's, it's really like a real-life horror story uh, come to life, and well, let's get into it. Rin was the only child of the Yamaoka family. She was raised in the dusty halls of a traditional house in Kagawa. She studied education at uh, Takamatsu. Uh, pardon my my um my my, my um Japanese. I'm really not that good good with it. Uh, a private university which weighed heavily on her family's shaky finances. Her mother got ill that year, and the bills started piling up. Rin worked part time in a few, in a futile attempt to help lighten the load. Her father faced a debt that grew without end. He started working double shifts in hopes of obtaining a promotion. That's when he started losing sleep. A dark whisper would keep him awake all night, reminding him of his hopeless situation. Exhausted, he started to lose grasp of reality, fighting to deny what the voice whispered at night. Rin's father made a desperate move. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pause right here. Now, here's the one thing. And, you know, I, I completely can... Uh, I come from a family of, of shaky finances, so, you know, I... um. I know this better than anybody, you know, how, how tough, you know, going to college was for me that one year and, and the, the toll it had on my family was, it was hard. It was hard for them. They're still kind of, you know, recovering from it. And yeah, I, t I, t I took that one year and haven't gone back yet due to just the hard situation of, you know, even that time I was working part time um, at, 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 at uh, JC Penney's actually. And I, I was getting full time hours, but I was still getting a good like 38 to 40 hours. And I was still, um, you know, with paying off my apartment and having and having financial aid and you know always paying for you know food my dogs all this other stuff it was hard to um to still make ends meet and and have enough to be like oh, okay I'm, I'm over i'm over i'm not struggling thank goodness so yeah i completely understand like the shake your finance part on so many levels and you know it's interesting to see that you know the family tried to the, the father tried to work double shifts so, you know this family really was trying to make ends meet and it's kind of saddening to see how this ends, but nonetheless, I I, I digress. Let's go back to the story. Um, he he met with his super his superiors and uh, explained his situation. He begged for a bonus and advance time off. Anything his his request was denied. The company had launched a defective production line that was causing them dearly. Someone had to be accountable, and Rin's father fit the bill perfectly. He was fired after twenty two years of service. That evening, Rin came home from work. She'd stay late to entertain customers that lingered at the restaurant. As she parked her bike in the shed, she heard her mother scream. Her mother scream from the house. She rushed in, climbing up the stairs to her parents' room. I'm gonna stop right. If you're screaming of any kind, make sure you arm yourself. Make sure you arm yourself. If someone is screaming. That's not a good thing. And that means either a you get out, of, you get out of that house. Or B, you make sure you have some that, that you can defend yourself with. All right, I just, want, I just want to make that be known. There she found bits and pieces of her mother on the floor. Her limbs were clean cut, tangled up in an unnatural posi position. Um, her, her, her chest were, were sliced up, revealing her, her uh, rib cage, which was cracked of open. Uh, Rin gagged. Uh, that's disgusting. I would never want to wish that experience on anybody. A sharp katana came crashing down. Rin blocked the blade, which bit into, into her bare forearm. The, sh the shock of recognition interrupted her pain. Her father was wielding a katana with a stoic expression. She cried out him to out him to make him stop, but he slashed her in the arm again. She rushed, she rushed off and slid, on, and slid on the blood, smeared floor. Using the... Um, <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. So using using her frame as a support, she raised herself up. The katana ripped through the wall. Oh my god! Oh goodness, Jesus! The poor wall. What, what did the wall do? You know, cleaning. Well, clean, clean. Oh my gosh! Sorry about this, folks. Cleaning her other arm, basically like uh, cle cleaving or cleaning kind of similar to things. Um, I put cleaning on this one because cleaving just doesn't sound right but anyway that other arm is bye bye she at that point just succumbed in pain and as she limped into the hallway 
on, you know, she basically at this point, now you guys remember this, not only has her arm been cut off, she also was sliced on her other arm. So at this point, she's really, really in a lot of pain. At this point, I'm quitting. Like, you know what? Fine, whatever. Look, at this point, she didn't do that, though. Um, and she went into the hallway only, only, to be, only to be met by her father's blade. Unfortunately, she stepped back trembling. And as she held together the, the soft, loose flush of her ab abdominal, which, by the way, is just hanging at this point, and she reclined in pain. Images of her mom's body flashed before her eyes, written charged at, at her father, making him stumble back. He punched her in the, in the torn ab abdomen, and she reclined in pain. As she struggled to get back up, he slashed her, her, he slashed her thigh, making her collapse on the floor. As she crawled towards the stairs, he grabbed her, her hair and yanked her against a, a, a partisan. The glass shattered on impact, and she fell through, landing, landing one floor down. She heard footsteps somewhere, somewhere above her. With effort, she moved, worming her way into a sea of broken glass. The shards gnawed at her, ripping her flesh. He had to be stopped. He would not get away with what he'd done to her or what he'd done to her mother. Coughing up blood, her chin grazed the glass. At this point, just really adding adding to, to the blood, to the bleeding. Um, a low-pitched heartbeat started started during started to like pretty much to ring in her ears. Her body felt so heavy she could no longer move. At this point, that means we're basically at this point we're knowing that she's she's dying. Like there's no other um way to either put this in a positive light. She is dying at the moment. Um the ground shook with her with her father's footsteps. She knew she was not going to make it. But she no longer cared. She would make him pay in this life or the next. A dark fog slowly so slowly, like pretty much creeped in, creep to where her eyes could see, but it could not subdue her rage. She would not rest, not yet. The darkness whispered, promising blood and revenge. And an oath was made, and Rin closed her eyes. And that was that. Now, here's the interesting thing about this, and I, this was, this is a story that I say, and I know I kind of mix up a couple words in there, and I do apologize for that, but. The story about this character is one of the most tragic, and I think if not the tra the most tragic, this is the one person that didn't do anything wrong. Like, absolutely, it's the only person I believe that didn't do anything wrong, actually, in, in all the stories, and as as killers. And and it's horrible, it's horrible to, to know that, you know, everyone else did something to be here. She was a teenage, uh, not a teenage, yeah, basically still a teenage girl going to college, and, you know, it's hard to really blame anybody for this. Because it's just like, so many wrongs and so many negatives will drive someone to do something crazy. And, you know, I do, of course, I'm still going to blame her father for freaking slicing and dicing her mom. And, and uh, you know, slicing and dicing Ren, too. That's just not right. No matter what your situation is, you don't take it out on your family. But, you know, at this point, he was on the breaking edge, all the losing sleep, all the... These are basic signs of someone losing reality and that needs to be checked into a mental institution. Because now they're, not, they're no longer sane. They're, they're doing things they normally wouldn't do. And when you start hearing voices, something is wrong with you. Please get help. There is no um, negative to you wanting to get help. You're not being... You're not doing yourself a disservice. You're getting help that way you can get better and rejoin the rest of us. And then society, that's all that is. And in, in his case, he lost. The mom was already sick. He, I guess the dad tried to blame her. And that was going to kill everybody just because, you know, maybe that was his easy way out of going to jail or whatever. We don't know that situation. They don't they don't give us that, that detail. But as for Rin, and this is what really interested me the most. The entity basically took killers. This one, he had to, or it had to make an oath with. So, that to me is the most interesting because it basically just kind of, you know, showed people the way this one, I guess, because she didn't have any evil in her necessarily that the fact she wanted revenge was like the only case why the enemy could, I think could actually probably have like taken her, but under an oath. And that's what we got. They, they, they promised she agreed to go with the entity because of blood and revenge. That way she could take out her, her anger, her revenge on the survivors in, in, in that realm. So, a lot of um, just very gruesome, gruesome. This is a sad story, and and a very harsh, harsh one for me to really talk about. It was like, 
I mean, there's so many real life aspects to this, and it's kind of insane to, to 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 you know to see and to and to and to read that that story. I mean, it's a sad one, and it's I said a very har harrowing tale. So, with that being said, everybody, this has been a great episode. Um, we'll see you next Tuesday for this ep for another at one of these. We'll be doing the nurse at that time. Typically, I don't tell you who we're going to do, but I'm going to tell you that we're going to be doing the nurse. So, so with that being said, everybody, please do leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to BVTV. Thank you guys so much for watching, and everybody stay off the hook.